I just got this new bow, and it doesn't make any sound on my viola. What's wrong with it? Well, I need some rosin on it. So today I'm going to show you exactly how I rosin my bow for success with my viola. The first thing that I do is to get a really good high quality rosin. So let me show you a few of those. First, I have one called Andrea. Andrea is awesome rosin. It comes in a little plastic box like this. I unscrew and here it is. It sits there and I can easily rosin my bow with it. There's a wonderful rosin that someone gave me this cake of called Holstein Reserve Rosin. That's awesome. It comes on a little cloth like this. It's stuck to it and then I can hold the cloth and rosin my bow with it. This is leather wood rosin. Comes in many different forms, but it comes in this beautiful little slide and you just slide the bow up and down in it. And of course there's magic rosin. Magic rosin is cool because you can put your logo or a picture on there and the rosin itself is clear. So let's start by rosining this bow which we saw has no rosin on it whatsoever. I like to choose a bit of a sticky rosin to put on that because it's easier to apply. So I'm going to use the magic rosin for this. Now some people say that you should scratch the surface of new rosin, which this is. This is brand new rosin. Some people say that you should scratch the surface of it so that it sticks better to the bow. I really, really do not like to do that because I really like the way that rosin looks and I like to kind of create my own look to it and make it nice and smooth. So I don't like to make it bumpy. I don't like it jagged. So I just keep it really, really, really smooth. So here's what I do. First of all, rosin is very, very brittle. It cracks, it does all sorts of things. And I can't tell you how many people have had these wonderful cakes of rosin and then they'll do something, they'll drop it, they'll hit it with the metal over here on the bow and then it'll crack and then they have to buy a new rosin. So let's try to stay away from that problem. So what I do is I take my thumb and I cover the metal so that the metal cannot touch the rosin. So all you have to do is hold the bow like this, put your thumb over the metal, take the rosin, and what I do is I'll start at the frog and I'll just start rubbing on. Here's a little tip. If you have a round rosin like this, I kind of circle the rosin around while I'm applying the rosin to the bow. That way it stays very flat and as it gets older, you can have a rosin that's really flat and still looks good. Let me show you that. This rosin right here started off about this tall and now it's all the way down, but it's still flat, which is awesome. So if you turn the rosin while you're applying to the bow, it will stay nice and flat. So let's take a look as I put the rosin on. I'll go to the frog first. And I'll just rub nice and gently several times, going all the way down to the bottom. No, remember, my thumb is covering the metal. Some people apply with the rosin. Some people kind of bow on the, on the rosin with the bow. I kind of do both. So if I go nice and slow, it looks like this. You can see me turning the rosin and bowing. At first with the new hair, I can feel that there's really no stickiness to the rosin. But as I keep on applying it, it starts to have a lot of friction or resistance. That's when I know I'm getting the rosin on there. You don't have to go that fast. You can go nice and slowly like this. Generally, I'll do the frog first, and then I'll move to the tip. Someone once told me, if you have rosin at the tip and rosin at the frog, that as you do your bow strokes, it will get distributed through the bow. There's a little bit of truth to that. So I generally put more rosin at the frog and more rosin at the tip. At the tip, it's a little bit harder to get that rosin on, so I have to kind of 
press in with my hand towards the rosin, especially with a new bow like this or new hair. I'm starting to feel some resistance there. That's awesome. Turning the bow. Like so. Once I've done the tip and the frog, now when I do the middle, I can just kind of go with a little bit of a longer swipe there. Kind of rubbing as I go. Okay, that feels pretty good. My next step is to try the viola and see if there's enough rosin on there. So let's give that a try. Yeah, that's great. I've got just the right amount of rosin on there. Perfect. When applying my daily rosin after the new bow has been totally rosined, then I apply a lot less, something like this. At the frog, I wait till I feel that resistance, like this, and always covering that metal piece. At the tip, like so. Feel the resistance. And then a few swipes right through the middle. And remember, I'm always turning that rosin like this so that it stays even. That's about it. That feels great. How often should I rosin my bow? Well, the real answer to that is rosin it when needed. So if the bow starts to feel slippery, then you should rosin it. And if it doesn't, you can keep on playing sometimes for a week or two weeks even without rosining your bow, as long as it has grip and your sound is good. So some people like to rosin it every day. I think that's a little bit too much. Some people never rosin their bow, which is not, a little bit too little. So you just have to find how much you want to do it. Personally, I usually rosin my bow about once every two weeks, but I apply a little bit more rosin than most people do, just like you saw. I like to put a lot of rosin on there, and then as it disappears, I can kind of feel that. Of course, you need to clean your strings because they get caked with rosin a lot of the time. But that's basically how I do my rosining. Things you have to remember. Number one, try to refrain from touching the bow with your finger because your finger has oils and dirt on it. And when the bow gets oily and dirty, then it will not make a sound. So the cleaner that your hair stays, you see how nice and white it is, the cleaner that the bow stays, the more the rosin adheres to it and the nicer your sound and the less maintenance that you need to do to your bow. Always keep your rosin in its case and closed so that it doesn't fall and break or things don't happen to it because rosin can shatter like glass when broken so we try to keep it looking as new as possible. Should I use dark or light rosin? Well, light rosin generally is more crispy and it's a little bit harder and, and dark rosin is a little bit softer so it's a little bit more sticky. I generally gravitate towards something just on the darker side. The lighter rosin to me tends to feel a little bit brittle when I'm playing and I like to feel the warmth of the string. So I do like a little bit of a darker rosin. Sometimes if you're not quite as experienced, the lighter rosins, they can get a little bit more of a punch a little bit more bite and you can feel a little bit more confident. So it's up to you. You kind of have to experiment. I would recommend getting something in between. I like the magic rosin because it's clear and it's kind of a hybrid of the dark and the light rosin. So it's very, very soft, yet it also has a lot of punch to it. So that's kind of why I like that. That's kind of what I look for. I don't like the really expensive rosins because they're very focused and sometimes I like a little this, sometimes I like a little that depending. So basically as long as you get a really good quality rosin, then I think that you're in pretty good shape. If you have any questions, just send a comment below and I can help you choose a rosin or discuss your rosin that you're using right now with you. I think that's about it for rosin. So I hope that you enjoyed the video and learned something from it. And until next time, Happy practicing.